Look at John chapter 6. Look at verse number 60. The Bible said, Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it. By the way, he knows when you're murmuring. He knows when you're talking about your preacher or talking about another church member. God, God knows. One man said this about gossip. He said, gossip is like mud slung against a clean wall. It may not stick, but it'll leave a mark. His disciples murmured it. Verse 61, he said unto them, Doeth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Right. Boy, if we could get that in our hearts, it'd help us a long way in life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Notice this. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. He's a sovereign God. And he said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Notice verse 66. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the, that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Right. Jeff, you lead us in prayer if you don't mind. Dear Lord, we love you today. God, we can't thank you enough, Lord, for the Spirit of God. Mm. Oh, we realize, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our dad, Lord, our pastor, our man of God. God, give us help. He's the man of the hour. God, stand where no man can stand alone. We pray, God, you'll rest our hearts. And God, you'll rest our attention. Yeah, I believe you have. Oh my. Lord, if you do, got a warning from somebody. Lord, I, Lord, that warning, God, there is going to come daily. Oh my. God, I pray, God, you'll arrest our hearts this morning. God, get us solely focused. Oh my. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, as the invitation comes, that God, you'll bind the devil, the solid yeah. rascal. God, I pray you'll throw him out of here. Yeah. God, people get deliverance. Oh my. God, yeah. Amen. Brother Doug, the Lord told me if we act upon this message here, this might help you down the road for more revivals. Amen. I want to preach to you, amen, with this thought in mind. Look at verse uh, number 66. The Bible said, From that time many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. I want to preach to you this morning with this thought in mind on the danger of turning back. On the danger of turning back. Now here in this chapter we find that the Lord had given a discourse. I've been preaching through this chapter on Wednesday nights at our church. And uh, the Lord had given a discourse uh, here about him being the bread of life. We know in the first part of the chapter uh, was that great miracle where he fed uh, the 5,000 as many as 15, 20,000 people and took that little boy's lunch. He uh, broke that, they broke that bread and distributed it out to the people. And when they got through, amen, they had more leftovers than they did lunch, amen. 
Well, Philip and him, they were worried about the Lord. He said, how are we going to feed this many? Uh, and they said, it's 200 penny worth going to be enough bread to feed this crowd. Hey, they had more left over when they got through, Brother Sean, than they did with lunch. Hey, that's just like God. Hey, Amen. John preached one night on he is enough. Now don't say God is enough. He's enough, friend. Amen. He's all you need. Boy, I thank the Lord for that. Not only did he break the bread and feed the multitude, amen, Jesus is the bread we need in verses 31 down through number 58. But in the text we read to you this morning, we see that Jesus was betrayed by many. Boy, he was betrayed by many. Really, it's a real hurtful story, Brother Mike. It's a, Brother Bob, it's a hurtful story. Hey, when you minister to people and you love people and you feed people, amen, and you're around them, and then when they turn their back on you, Bob, it's a real hurtful thing, amen. I want to tell you what it will cost you to turn away from God. I want you to notice, first of all, I see the retraction that is conceivable. You say, preacher, I'll never turn my back on God. That's what Peter said. Yeah. Though all men forsake you, Brother Doug, he said, Big Doug, I'll, I, though all men forsake you, he said, I'll clean, I'll never turn my back on you. Hey, Peter was the one that denied him three times, amen. He said, I'll go with you. And he turned around, amen, and he betrayed the Lord. Now, I want to say this to you, friend. One man said this, hey, you, you, can, you can walk away and backslide from God, amen. Now, listen, you would expect backsliders and backstabbers to walk away, but not those that are closest to you. One man said this, Brother Doug, don't be too disheartened. Jesus handpicked 12 men. One was a doubter by the name of Thomas. Another was a deceiver by the name of Judas. And another a denier by the name of Peter. He handpicked Clint 12 men. Hey, and they, they were some amen that turned on him. Amen. I want to say this. I see the reputation of the confronted. Look at verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. Amen. Listen, friend. Our walk with God should not depend upon other people. Amen. Brother Phil, our walk with God should not depend upon nobody else. Brother Sean, if, hey, if you quit, I hope you don't. If you quit, I want to keep on going on. Amen. Jeffrey, if you turn your back on God, yeah. you're my son. I hope you don't. Hey, I don't want to quit. No. Brother Bob, if you quit, amen. Right. Hey, I don't want to throw my hands up and quit. Right. First Thessalonians 15, 58. Therefore, amen, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abandoning the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, amen. We see the reputation of the confronted. One man said this, he said in the Christian life, if you don't learn to walk alone, you will not walk very long. I'm going to tell you, the Christian life is a lonely life. I mean, when I first got saved, amen, Thad, I had a bunch of friends. I mean, listen, I'd go through town. Had that old 69 Ford Trino, Brother Doug. I'd go through town, amen, before I got Big Doug to end the town. I'd have a carload of people. Oh, yeah. You know why? Because they knew what I had in my car. Right. Amen. Right. Hey, I had a bunch of fly-by-night friends. And I'll tell you, by the end of the night, when everything was gone, everything was drunk up, when everything was smoked up, hey, when the gas hand was empty, hey, man, when my billfold was empty, hey, the friends were gone. You ever had any of them fly-by-night friends, hey, man? Some of them people that have stayed with you, why things are good? Boy, they said they'll hang with you. I've had people down through the years, been pastoring, hey, amen, uh, nearly 31 years. I've had people stand in the pulpit, Brother Doug, tell me they love you. Hey, preacher, if you preach, I'll be there with you, Brother Peter. Just stand, preach that word, and then they turn and walk away from you, amen. Listen, friend, it's possible for you to turn your back on God. Amen. I see not only the uh, reputation of the confronted, but don't you notice this? I see the record of the casualties. Look at verse 66. 
He said from that time, many of his disciples went back. Many of them. I want to say this. Just to insert this in here, Brother Michael, I'm glad Brother Ray didn't say all of them. <laughs> amen. I'm glad, amen, God always has a few. I'm glad, amen, he said Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'll be in the midst. It don't take a crowd for God to show up. Amen. Hey, friend, I'm glad not everybody's quit on God. I'm glad not everybody's quit praying for old-time revival. I'm glad there's a church, amen, in northern Kentucky that's letting its light shine for Jesus. Amen. Don't tell you what we're living in a day where many people, beloved, are turning their back. They're walking away from the gospel. They're walking away from uh, God-fearing churches, amen, from Bible-believing churches. You know why? They give up on God, amen. Turn to 1 John chapter number 2. Don't you see this? 1 John chapter 2, I'm talking about the record of the casualties. One man said this. He said, if your walk with God becomes too casual, it will not be long before you'll be a casualty. You start pulling back a little bit. Amen. You start hey, missing on Sunday night. You start missing on Wednesday night. Then you'll start missing Sunday school. And before you know it, hey, you'll be completely out of church. Not telling you the truth or not. 1 John chapter 2, look at verse 15. John said, Love not the world, neither the things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, uh, but of the world. Verse 17, And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Look at verse number 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Amen. The record of the casualties. Why do people end up, Brother Bob, Brother Doug, why do they end up, Brother Mike, why do they end up being a casualty? I don't, I don't say this. Number one, their love's not right. Look at verse 15. He said, Love not the world, neither the things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know why a lot of people had not got in on this revival, Brother Clint, Brother Rod? Because they love the world. Their love for God, Brother James, hadn't been what it should be. Amen. Amen. Listen, hey, we have revival meetings down home. We have stuff at home, amen. Hey, it's almost, you know, an uphill struggle to try to have revival meeting, Brother Josh. Hey, because as soon as you announce it, you start hearing excuses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all help me this morning. Hey, I, I wanted to preach a glory message, amen. I wanted to preach a shout message, amen. But this is what's on my heart. Hey, you start having revival, and if you're not careful, amen, there'll be one excuse after another why we can't attend revival. Amen. Listen, I want to tell you what. Hey, I told Brother Doug, I, I just wanted to come up here and get in on this. Hey, friend, when it's a dry, when you get in a desert place, you get in a dry place long enough, amen. Hey, you want to get where some water's at, friend. Do you know why a lot of people end up a casualty, Brother Brian? Because their love's not right. They love the things of the world, Sean, more than they love the things of God. Are you listening to me, amen? Hey, you can be around somebody. You get to talking to them, Brother Bob. You can find out very quick what they love. Jesus said this, amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. One man said, Brother Donald, what's in the well is going to come up in the bucket. 
you get around somebody, Brother Mike, Brother Sean, you'll find out what they love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've even heard your pastor, me and me, you know me and your pastor's best friends. Hey, we'll be talking, hey man. He says sometimes people gather together, hey, when you come in church, and everything else is on your mind but revival. Yes, right. And we wonder why God don't visit with us. Right. You're right. We wonder, Peter, why we don't see God showing up and seeing a brokenness, amen, and seeing revival break out. You know why? Because our love's not right. right. That's good. Good That's good. Help us this morning, Lord, amen. I know this go over like a lead balloon, but it's still Bible, amen. Not only is our love not right, but I want to say this, lust is not right. Look at verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You know why some people, amen, turn away, brother, feel from God? Why they become casualties? Because lust is not right. Amen. Good. I want to say this to you, friend. Hey, we're all tempted, drawn away, enticed in this flesh. Amen. Yeah. Hey, the devil attempt does. He'll tempt you. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care what your title is. If it's pastor, preacher, teacher, son, amen, Sunday school, whatever, deacon. Hey, I don't care who it is, Brother Eddie. Hey, the devil's going to tempt you. The thief, John 10, 10, cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. He'll do everything in his power. Hey, to try to get you sidelined, friend. Amen. That lust is not right. Amen. Hey, we have to be careful about that. It's not just talking about sexual things, amen, carnal things. Amen. Carnality. Hey, we'll get our mind on everything else. Hey, when revival's going on, hey, we'll lust after this or lust after that, amen. Hey, we'll get our mind uh, on everything, Brother Rod. Josh, we can't focus on revival. I want to say this, what you focus on will be what you will become. Amen. Listen, focus is the enemy of distraction unless distraction is your focus. Amen. Jesus told over in the Gospels that we're to have a single eye. We're not to have double vision. We're to have a single eye. We're to be focused. Amen, Josh, Brother Jordan, in these days, we're to be focused on revival. I mean, friend, hey, I, I've got to where I can't wait to get here. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Hey, we try, we try, Brother Mike, be the first ones. I mean, the week before last, hey, I was by myself, amen. Hey, I got here, I beat everybody here, amen. He said, what'd you do? I'd walk down the prayer grounds. I'd see old Charlie's name down there. I'd look at him rocks. Some of them had names inscribed on them rocks, amen. Yeah. Hey, I'd just walk around, see God, amen, everywhere. Hey, when you get excited about revival, hey, you won't come dragging in. You know what you'll do? You'll be the first one to be here and the last one to leave. Amen. Amen. Oh boy, I wish preacher quit having so many revivals. Your love's not right, friend. Amen. Somebody say amen. Well, there's the danger of drifting away. These casualties, amen. Love's not right. Lust is not right. Now, don't you notice this in 1 John chapter 2? Look at verse 21 and 22. I want to say this. Lying is not right. Notice what he said, amen. Verse 21, he said, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is in the truth. Look at verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son, Brother Doug. Right. Yeah. You know why people of Sean become a casualty? Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. They get to where the devil, Brother Bob, will deceive them and they'll start lying, amen. Yeah. You know what I found out, Big Doug, about a lie? Yeah. Hey, if you have to lie one time, you have to tell two or three others to back that one up. Right. Well, Mark Twain said, if you just tell the truth, you don't have to remember nothing. Yeah, that's 
Psalms 119, 89, Forever, O Lord, is thy word settled in heaven. Hey, the truth's not going to change, friend. My daddy always said this, Brother Doug. He said, a man that'll lie to you is still from you. Just be honest. Hey, why do people become casualties? You know why? Because they go around, amen, and start lying. Oh, that church ain't having revival. I went up there and I didn't feel nothing. You know why? Because either you're not saved or you're not right with God. <laughs> Just tell it like it is. Somebody say amen, Brian. Why say? I don't tell you what. Hey, old Phil, I watched him back there a while ago. He was running. He come in church this morning. He was so full. He was standing there talking to me and Sean. Hey, he got to weeping, telling about God. Next thing I know, I was crying. Amen. <laughs> I guess it's all right to cry. John 11, 35, Jesus wept. Somebody say amen. I'll tell you, if Jesus wept, it's all right for you and I to weep. One man said this, Bob. He said, as long as our head leaks, it won't swell. Somebody say amen. That's good. Amen. I'm talking about casualties. Listen to this right here. Now listen to this right here. I like this. I found this in the book. The fruit of your life reveals the nature of your heart the fruit of your life reveals the nature of your heart what you plant is going to come up if you sow tomatoes you're not going to reap watermelons hey my daddy was a produce man I know all about produce friend I was running all my life all my life I know all about Hey, Ray asked my go. He says, is it true? Can you thump a cantaloupe, amen, or watermelon? Tell what it is. Yeah, it's true, amen. I can tell you if one's green, if it's ready to eat, somebody say amen. Hey, I was raised in it. I know it all my life. Listen, the fruit of your life reveals the nature of your heart. In other words, you are a product of your thoughts and actions. If you sit around and hear people lie all the time and tell a bunch of baloney, amen, you know what's going to happen? If you don't get away from that crowd, hey, you're going to be full of it too. You get around somebody's down in the mouth all the time, hey, they can't see the forest on count of the trees, amen. Nothing good ever happens to them. Hey, you get around somebody's negative, you know what's going to happen? If you don't depart from them, Brother Rod, Brother Doug, you're going to become negative. You're right. Well, if you're negative, don't get around me, friend. I don't want it and don't need it. Amen. <laughs> amen. I want to be around somebody that's positive, the, the cross. Give me something positive. Amen. <laughs> I want to be a good influence, a positive influence, Brother Clint. Amen. On somebody's life. One man said this, Brother Peter. He said, the Bible may hurt you with truth, but it will never comfort you with a lie. Amen. The Bible, amen, it will, it may hurt you with truth, but it will never comfort you with a lie. Don't come to church expecting Brother Doug to tell you what you want to hear. Hey, you pray for your man of God and your Sunday school teacher, Brother Aaron. When you come to church, hey, God, you fill him with the Holy Ghost. Give him discernment and let him preach what God, what I need to hear that's going to help straighten me out. Amen. <laughs> Talking about the retraction that's conceivable. Amen. Then the record of the casualties. Don't you notice this back in our text? Look at John chapter number 6 back in our text. Amen. Hey, we see, friend, the reaction of the castaways. The reaction of the castaways. Look at verse 66. The Bible said, the latter part, they went back and walked no more with him. I wrote this down. There's three types of believers, Brother Clint. There's unbelievers, there's make-believers, and then there's true believers. Somebody say amen. Hey, some people come in church, amen. Hey, they'll put on a false face. 
I mean, when I used to love to watch Batman and Robin. Somebody say amen. I was about six years old, Brother Doug. My grandma took me uptown, son, in Greenville. And we went to old theater up there. And boy, I mean, I never will forget when I saw that Batmobile come out of that cave for the first time with that fire shooting out the rear end. Son, I'm telling you what, I was sold, Big Doug. I was sold on it, amen. I mean, I was sold. Old Batman and Robin, they come out of that cave, man. I mean, it, it lit me up, the little old boy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So they had a bat phone. Amen. They could call to get stuff done. Amen. And I'll say this. There was one character on there. I remember him well. His name was False Face. Come on. Come on. Hey, these people come to church. Amen. Hey, they'll put on a show. They'll smile. Amen. Make you think they're the next best thing to slice bread. They'll make you think. Amen. Hey, they've got a angel wings and a halo. Think they love God. Amen. Hey, but in reality, they're not what they used to be, and they're not what they ought to be. You can backslide sitting on a church pew. You don't have to be out in a honky tonk. You don't have to be out in the world, amen, to backslide. Josh, you can sit right here in the house of God and get bitter. Why well, don't want to be no casualty? Amen. God help us not to be a casualty. There's the retraction that is conceivable. Second of all, notice this. I see the reason of their compromise. The reason of their compromise. Amen. They wanted, amen, they had a religion without comprehension. Look at verse number 60. Many therefore of the disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Amen. Some have heard the truth time and time again. Hey, they've never trusted the Lord. They'll die and go to hell just like people uh, who have never heard the word of God. They some people, Brother Josh, they'll love the preacher as long, amen, as he's preaching on God's love. Y'all yeah. Yeah. help me this morning, amen. Yeah. Feel, feel a little, I'm feeling a little pullback from this, amen. Yeah. <laughs> His disciples were drawing back, Ray, and I'm feeling a little pullback, amen. Oh. No, you may not have me back up here. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Now, I want to say something to you, friend. Listen, hey, as long as the preacher preaches what you want to hear, Hey, as long as he preach God's love, hey, God is a God of love, but God is also a God of judgment. Our God is a consuming fire, amen. God hates sin. Amen. He's angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 9, 17, the wicked and all nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. Why do you think all this is happening to us in America, amen? All this COVID and the world's turned upside down. Seen a sign there at home. Amen. It said on the church sign, said God has given the biggest altar call that he's ever given. The Holy Ghost told me the other week when I pulled up here in a parking lot, he told me, Brother Doug, listen, I like it when he talks to you, Randy. I like it. Amen. Brian, when he talks to you. I pull up in the parking lot out there. Here's what he said, Brother Bob. He said, this might be the last revival you get in on. I don't know if that means the rapture's coming or I'm getting ready to die. Somebody say amen. <laughs> That's what he told me, Katie. I pull up out there. He said, this might be the last revival you ever get to see. Boy, I don't want to be a casualty. I don't want to be sitting on the sidelines. Hey, when the church is in here shouting. Hey, when these young people get up crying and people getting saved. Thank God going to one another. Miss Kathy hugging one another. When people, Miss Sonny, is getting right with God, Big Doug. Hey, I don't want to be sitting out there somewhere shipwrecked or sitting on the sideline or be a casualty. Amen. Right, right. There's a high cost for low living, friend. They want a religion without comprehension. Well, what did Paul tell Timothy about the last days? 1 Timothy 4, verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some, thank God again, not all. <laughs> some 
shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. You know what God said would permeate the last days? A false religion. Doctrines of devils. I want to tell you, people believe anything. They'll believe anything. Americans are so gullible. People, Brother Brian, they're gullible. Amen, Brother Rod, they're gullible. Brother Doug, they'll believe anything. You know what we need? We need this book preached. There's one fella, John R. Rice, or somebody I was reading at her. He said, we need truth with fire on it. Yeah, That's what we need. Yeah. Mr. Noreen, we need the truth. I don't come to church for the preacher to preach Alice in Wonderland, amen, or uh, Snow White in the Seven Drawers. Hey, I come to the house of God. Give me the book, and if it tears my hide up, hey, I need to get in the altar and get right with God, Amen. Yeah. Amen, James. Is that right or not? Amen. False religion. Amen. I want to say this to you, friend, that everything in life requires a commitment. Amen. Right. True. That's right. True. Hey, you got a you got a beautiful church here. Me and Jeffrey have been coming up. Hey, I was out there this morning. I thought Randy was cutting grass. Amen. <laughs> I said, God help Randy done backslid. He's cutting grass on Sunday, amen. <laughs> I come up, Brother Doug, you had that John Deere out there. Hey, the winds had blowed and blowed all kind of leaves and stuff on the driveway. You know what he's doing being a servant, Brian, out there? He had that lawnmower cranked up. Sean just blowing the leaves off of the drive. Amen. Well, we, we need some more servants in the house of God. Amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. Everything in life takes a commitment. Sure. You know what? Your pastor is committed to Emmanuel Baptist Church. You say, Preacher, I'm tired. Do you think he's tired, him and his wife? She works all day. Hey, you, you think they're tired? <laughs> you know what they do? They just keep coming back for more. Hey, they might be another Brandon. That it come. Thank God I, that's indelible in my mind, brother. I can see you jumping that pew. Son, that tore me up. Amen. Hey, your mama down there in the altar with you, hugging on you. Son, Luke 15, the prodigal son. Hey, I, that's indelible in my mind. That'll go to grave of me. You know why I keep coming back for more and why I don't want to be a casualty? Because I want to see more Brandons. Hey, get their life right with God. I want to see more souls get saved. Hey, Miss Debbie and others. Hey, I want to see more kids get their life right with God. That's why I keep coming back and I don't want to be a casualty. Amen. What commitment. Amen. Religion. They wanted a religion without comprehension. They said it's a hard saying. We see a false religion in 1 Timothy 4, then speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Not only do I see a false religion, I see a fake reality. He said in Proverbs, can a man, I believe it's chapter 6, hey, carry hot coals in his bosom and not be burned? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Last days, people have their conscience seared with a hot iron. Hey, it don't matter what the preacher says. It don't matter what he preaches, Brother Kevin. It don't matter, hey, man, if he preaches full of the Holy Ghost. Hey, the people's going to leave, Brother Aaron, and live like they want to live. Right. You can live like you want to live, friend. You can choose your sin, but you can't choose the consequences. Galatians chapter 6, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow the flesh of the flesh, you'll reap corruption. If you sow the spirit of the spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. Amen. Amen. There's the reason of the compromise. There's a false religion. Then there's a fake reality. Then in 1 Timothy 4, 3, they said forbidding to marry. <laughs> I see a forced rebellion, amen. Yeah. Good. Good. 
I want to tell you, when I was coming up, amen, Brother Mike, you older than I am, hey, when we was coming up, you know what happened? You two kids would get married, then have children. You know what they're doing now? They're having children, and then they might get married. Y'all help me here, amen. I mean, Josh, that telling the truth or not? And I know people make mistakes. Listen, I've made mistakes and, and keep making them, amen. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, we're living, we're living in, a, in a time where parents, amen, they don't tell their children nothing. Right. We're so drunk on modern technology. Yeah. Right. We don't have time for our children. Right. Hey, wake up in the bed with a computer. Go to bed with a computer. Right. Amen. People don't have no time for their children no more. Right. Don't know how to tell them what's right and what's wrong. Yep. Right, preacher. Listen to this, friend. Listen to this right here. Man told me this not too long ago, Brother Bob. He said, when you come down to the end of your life, hey, when you come down to the end of your life, he said, I've never heard, Brother Doug, I've never heard nobody say, I wished I would have worked longer. Wow. Mm, that's right. Amen. You know what they say, Peter? I wished I'd have spent more time with my family. Yeah. Talking about being a casualty. Reasons of the compromise. They wanted a religion without compliance. Look back in John number 6. Amen. In verse 64. Jesus said, but there are some of you that believe not. Hey, some people, they just want to skate into church. They want to skate into heaven. Amen. Hey, they, they want to have their way and they want their cake and eat it too. They want to live like hell on earth and then die and wake up in heaven. They want to live like the devil, amen, six days a week and come to the house of God and expect Renee James for God to show up. Amen. There's a religion without compliance. Some have heard the truth time and time and time again, never trusted Christ. They'll go to hell just like the atheist Josh has never heard, amen. Then I see a religion without conversion. Look at John 6, look at verse 65. There, Jesus said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come to me except it were given of him of my Father. You'll never get saved, Brother Mike, until the Holy Ghost convicts you of your sin. Look at verse 44, John 6. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. That's why we have so many people that have a false religion. Yep. So we, who, who was we talking to this week? Was it in a restaurant, Doug? Talking to a little girl over there and, and uh, she we and said something about revival. Yeah. And she didn't even know what revival was. She said, what is revival? Yeah. God, I, I had a massive heart attack. <laughs> what did she say she was? Uh, she was Jewish. And, and your preacher said Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that floored me, Brian. Josh, she said, didn't even know what revival was. Hey, got the hotel. Thank you for the hotel. It's nice. Amen. Staying over. Little boy over. And I've been trying to make friends with him. Little boy over. And trying to talk with him, brother. Bob, amen. Hey, I was coming every night. We was getting big Doug, getting her suits, coming out the door. He said, where are y'all going every night dressed up? <laughs> Ain't that good, amen? Hey, he recognized we was going somewhere. <laughs> We weren't going to bed. Thank God we was going somewhere. Somebody say amen. amen. You know what that did? That opened the door for me to witness to it. Amen. I had one of them Romans Road tracks. Amen. I told him, I said, we going to revival. He said, well, I grew up Catholic. You know, and we got talking. Amen. I told him where the church was, Josh. He invited him over here, Brother Doug. Hey, listen. I don't want to be a casualty. I don't want to get on the sideline. Amen. Where Brother Bob, I can't be used for God. Hey, if you live for God, let your light shine. Amen. Hey, God will give you an opportunity to be a witness for Him. Amen. Religion without conversion. Amen. One man said this, and I like this. Y'all know I like these sayings. said, no one is as empty as those who are full of themselves. Amen, Donald Trump. Amen. No one is as empty as those who are full of themselves. Right. Well, I don't need God. I don't need revival. Well, I don't need to pray. 
I don't need to read my Bible. You're the very one that needs it, friend. Let me close with this, amen. It's a little been a little hard preaching, but that's all right. I'm talking about, amen, drawing back, Brother Bob, Brother Doug, drawing back, turning you back on God, Brother Michael. Jesus said, will you also go away? There's a retraction that is conceivable. I see the reasons of the compromise, but I want to close with this. I see the requirements to continue. Notice what he said, what Peter said in verse 68. Oh, Peter, he gommed up a lot, Brother Mike, but I'm going to tell you what, there's several times he's done some good stuff. Sure Who stood up on the day of Pentecost, amen, and preached full of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Over 3,000 got saved. I ain't never done that. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 68, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You know what we ought to do? We ought, Christian, we ought to rest in our choices. I'm satisfied with Jesus. Doug, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with you. I don't want what this world has to offer. Hey, the older I get, the less I care about material things. One man said the best things in life are not things. Amen. Amen. All I want to see is God do something. But Doug, I want to see God move and like he has up here. Hey, I hope this thing, after we're gone, I hope you call us back. Hey, in August, say, boy, the wind's blowing again. Amen. Hey, we'll get in a Toyota Avalon, Sean. Thank God we'll drive six and a half hours. Hey, we'll come again. Somebody say amen. Philippians 1 6. Hey, Paul said this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hey, where am I going to go? I'm just going to stay with Jesus, James. Amen. I'm going to stay with him. I'm satisfied, Mike, with him. Amen. I'm going to stay filled with him. I'm satisfied with him. Thank God John laid over on his breast. Hey, when Jesus said, there's one of you going to forsake me. Oh, John and beloved laid over on his breast. Hey, Peter and all the rest of them said, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Hey, John didn't say that. You know why? Because thank God he was close to Jesus. Somebody say Amen. He had his head. He felt the breath of God. He had his head laying on his breast. He knew, Big Doug, it wasn't going to be him that was going to forsake him. You know why? Amen, Clint, because he was close to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Renee, you come, amen. I'm about to preach out here. Rest in our choices. Amen. I want to say this. We can rejoice in our changed lives. Yeah. Look what he said, amen. Look what he said down in verse 68. He said, Thou hast the words of eternal life. I want to tell you, the Bible changed my life, friend. 22 year old drunk, Brother Bob, I've heard your testimony. It's just the grace of God you're alive, friend. The grace of God. Bob, this book changed my life. I'm not looking for another Bible, I don't want another Bible. You can have the NIVs, the HIVs, you can have them all, amen, NSB, whatever it is. Hey, I don't want another Bible, friend. Give me the old time Word of God, Jeremiah 6, 16. Hey, get in them old paths, ask for them old paths, and walk therein, amen. I'm staying with what works, friend. I'm not going to change. It's too late in the game to change, Josh. Hey, I'm going to stay with the book and the blood and the blessed hope. Hey, I'm going to stay with Jesus. Amen. Well, I don't want to be a casualty. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.